Okay, uh, hey guys, I took a break, kind of, from YouTube. I took a few days off, but I didn't really take it. I didn't, like, leave completely. I was reading, watching. I sent a few messages, but I wasn't making any videos. I was really kind of just... It was frustrating. It was really frustrating, actually, because I wanted to respond, but I didn't. And I didn't because Amanda... Well, because I chose not to, but the reason I chose not to is because Amanda has been talking a lot about that I need to take a break is if she knows what's best for me. So I stopped, and I think I started to build some sort of resentment towards her because I would watch videos, particularly from uh, Emily Elizabeth, uh, Emily, her screen name is Emily E-L-Z-B-T-H. And I sent her a message about being emotionally open because I saw a comment that she made about how, Emily, how you said, uh, I'm, to uh, opt 42, OPT 42, you said, uh, I can't remember exactly, you said something about like, it, it, you actually are being emotionally open, but I guess, you know, I guess for someone like me who's always emotionally open, now that statement rung out to me when you said to him that you are always emotionally open, no one is. And we say that as a wall, as a barrier, because we don't want to experience emotion. You know, no one really, well, we want to, we're afraid to. God, I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, I'm gonna start this video off. I want to specify something because this is this is for Gary, too. Gary A. Brown, Burn Victim Seven Seven. Who, if you guys haven't seen his stuff, go to his page. Burn Victim Seven Seven. That's the, that's a the screen name, Gary. He's brilliant. Um, and Gary and I are very similar in that we're both very analytical. But I think Gary, I think that you're disassociating between what you think and what you feel and they're the same thing. Emotion, what I think of as emotion. I think that there is only one emotion. I think people do the word emotion a disservice and fool we fool ourselves by saying that anger and laughter and happiness, that they're emotions, but they're not. They're reactions. They're probably instinctual reactions to situations. You win a thousand bucks and you're happy. But it fades, it goes away. It's not emotion. Emotion is consistent. It's within us. It's this feeling that we have. That, that we get close to sometimes. And it's fucking freaky because it's not common. People are built to kind of... It's, it's weird. We're like built to want to feel it, but also we're built to, to be afraid of feeling it because it's so intense. And I think of emotion as love and pain. And I don't mean love like I love you. Like that's infatuation, that feeling of like I want to be with you. That comes and it goes. That's, that's just like laughter or pain, not, not pain, laughter or anger. Like anger, it happens. You get angry, it goes away. It's not emotion. Emotion exists always. It's that feeling that never goes away that we touch on to at times. And it's love and it's pain, it's openness genuine, it's real, maybe the most real thing that we can experience. We can feel it without any external anything. We have it. It's the thing that we all have in common is that emotion, that core. And, and Gary, I guess this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about emotion. Because I think people get in their mind and say, I get angry. I laugh a lot. I make a lot of jokes. I'm very emotional. But the truth is, no, we're not. When we make a lot of jokes, we're doing it because we're nervous. When we, make, when we get angry, we're doing it because we're nervous. And we're nervous because we're afraid of experiencing the emotion that's underneath all that. The emotion. The pain. Accepting that we are completely flawed. That we're fucking... We don't know anything. That we're completely wrong about everything, but at the same time we're completely right. I mean wrong and right, that's dangerous. We're completely ignorant. And that's painful to think about, but it's true. None of us have any fucking idea what's going on. We're all just kind of making it up as we go. We're all kind of creating our own reality. And I think we're better off when we get in touch with this emotion. Because we have more of a connection to other human beings. Because you can talk about philosophy and you can talk about things in books and about you know, <coughs> ideas from philosophers, physicists, p 
people don't fucking get into that as much because it's not emotional. I mean, some philosophy, but it's not emotional. When you talk about what makes you, what, what, what you find painful, when you talk about the things that you're afraid to talk about, that's emotion. That's what people can connect to. That's what I like to do. And I think the reason that you're getting so angry is because you're not comfortable with it because it's not something that you're very experienced with. That's a really condescending way to put it. I don't mean it like that. I'm sorry. It's just something that you haven't done a lot. Maybe you have. And I know it's an assumption, but it seems like because you don't do it, I assume that you haven't done it. I think that we tend to do what we're used to. The only reason I'm doing it is because I was in this long, long, long-term relationship that kind of pushed me and pushed me and pushed me. I was pushing myself, and I just have changed over the years. I've been so analytical. I was, a phys I was gonna go to college for physics, you know, get like most intelligent in my high school graduating class, always into like math and science, like up to pre-calculus. And then I just realized I'd rather be an actor. It's more fun. It's more, I'm more able to engage human, humans, human behavior. And I think I can reach more people as an actor than I can as a physicist. Because I don't want to be fucking stuck in a lab writing books. I want to talk to people. I'm not afraid of it anymore. I mean, I am still, but I'm less afraid of it than I used to be. So I made like 50 points in two minutes. I hope that you guys do. Whatever. Um, I don't disagree with you about anything, Gary. I think that we see things similarly, but we see things differently. Only because of life experience. I think ultimately we believe the same thing. I want to know why you got so angry. Why you say things like... I'm going to read a comment that you left on a Will's page. Lateralist. Lateralist. L-A-T-E-R... A L I S T. These people that I'm talking about, Lateralist and uh, Emily Elizabeth and Burn Victim 77, you guys check out their videos, check out their pages. They're really insightful, intelligent people. And uh, I've been interested in them. So, this message that you left on his video, he's a, he's a flake. And I'm sorry if you're offended by my dislike for him. That's interesting to me that you would even say that you dislike it. What do you dislike about me? What do you dislike about what I'm saying? Is it that it's touching close to home for you? Is it that I'm talking about something that you are afraid to experience? I'm serious, dude. We're all the fucking same. Don't be afraid of it. Just fucking do it. It's life. It's not like it's fake. I mean, this is real. This is who I am. This is how I am with every person I know. <coughs> also, I'm on antibiotics right now. I feel so much better. I'm taking this Mucinex and I'm like coughing up a bunch of shit. Um, <clears throat> Alright, all that being said, Gary, I wanted to respond to you. And uh, Emily, I want to respond to you. This is what I mean by emotion, you guys. This is why when I say if you're not emotional or are you emotional, I question your emotions. It's because people that laugh and people that get angry are not being emotional. They're avoiding it. Anger is an aberration. There's no need for it. People that are balanced are not getting angry. They're not laughing. They're just experiencing things. They're feeling the pain that exists in the world. And they're feeling the, the openness that exists in the world because it's all happening at the same time. And the laughter is a diversion. And the anger is a diversion keep saying the same thing. Okay, that being said, I want to talk a little bit about what's been going on the last few days for me. I, uh, it built and built, and this animosity that I felt towards, I think, towards Amanda, which was totally misplaced, it was me not expressing myself, it built up, and I told her yesterday that I wasn't going to be able to fly back, I wasn't, I wasn't going to fly back to Ohio with her in late November, because I don't want to. I don't have the money, I, I want two weeks off. And she freaked out that I wasn't going back there because she's going back. And she wanted me to go back to this high school reunion. And uh, <coughs> she freaked out. And then I just lost my mind. I went ballistic. I started screaming. And she went upstairs and I followed her upstairs and I bashed the door open. And I was screaming. And I grabbed her and I threw her on the futon. And I was... And she was like fighting, hitting me. And, and I, I was like, got on top of her. And I was screaming at her, I will kill you. I hate you. Just in a rage. I haven't done this since I was like 20 years old, 21 years old in a car where I was slamming on the steering wheel, 
screaming at her. It was awful. And it happened because I was suppressing what I was feeling. And what I was feeling ultimately is that I want an open relationship. And when I say open, I just want a relationship where I don't, someone else isn't deciding how I live. That's what society's come to. We get into a relationship. All of a sudden, it means more than every other relationship to us. And we let this other person put restrictions on us. And we live within this mold and we become miserable. We're not meant to do that. Human beings are not meant to fit into a mold. We're meant to explore. I'm meant to explore. Myself, my, my humanity, my sexuality, all of it. And that's what I brought up. And that's what I told her. This is what I want. I'm not going to lie about it anymore. I'm not going to not say it. I'm not going to pretend like I don't want a level of openness with people. I want to experience people, humans, in different levels, sexually, emotionally. And to be told, be in a relationship and be told, you can't do that. That's fucking crazy to me. It's crazy to me. And it's not dang it's dangerous if you drink and then you fuck somebody and then the next day you don't talk about it because you were drunk because you didn't experience it and you're afraid of it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about experiencing something. And you know what? We talked and we talked and we talked about it all day yesterday and she freaked out and then we talked about it more and Kif came over and we talked about it more and it's unbelievable. To be able to be open about something like this with someone that you're in a relationship with, that you've been in a relationship with, is mind-blowing. Of course we can do that. Of course we can be open with people we love. Of course we can be open with people that we are married to or in a relationship with. I hate how people label it and change it. It's no different. A man, My relationship with a man is no different than my relationship with anyone else. Except that I'll have kids with her and I live with her. But like I was, you know, I'm living with my old roommates. We don't put restrictions on each other. Just because a man does someone that I have sex with that we're dating Again, I use the, the quotes, the, the label, because it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't... We're the exact same people that we were before we got into the situation. And neither of us are going to change for it. That's awful. I mean, you change emotionally by finding compromise. And I think the compromise in this situation is that we're going to be open about it. We're going to talk about it. And I'm down with her having sex with other people. She wants to. She's told me she wants to. I don't want her to be afraid of that. Don't be afraid. It's the fear that fucking kills us. It's the fear that holds us back. It's the fear that stops us from innovating and, and being close to each other. And that's, what, that's why this world is how it is right now, is because we're just all afraid. We're all living in monogamy. And what happens is we get married and we just have no more friends. We spend all our time with our, this one person, not expressing what we really want, which is to be open with everyone. I think every human being wants to be open with everyone. Undeniably. We want it at our core. We want to be able to coexist peacefully with everyone. Openly. So we're going to talk about it. And I feel so much better now that I've opened up about it and I wish that it didn't have to explode in anger for something like that to come out, I wish that's not how it happened. And that's my own my own insecurity. My own fear. My own inability to bring it up. Well not inability, but choice not to bring it up. So I, this uh this this video I had so many points all at once. So much went on. Okay. I'm glad I'm, I'm, I took the break because it was an experience and it forced me to accept something about myself, which is what I want, which is to be open with people. And I'm, I'm talking about open. I'm not talking about kind of open. I'm talking about no walls. Walls are completely unnecessary. People are so afraid of sex. And people are afraid of sex because we're born into this society that's afraid of sex. People aren't, af aren't afraid of sex throughout history. It's, it's come and it's gone. Sexuality itself is great. It's normal. It's human. 
It's nothing to be afraid of. It's something to have control over. You don't talk about it, and we lose control of it, and we fucking cheat on each other. We fuck someone, we don't talk about it, and it kills us, and it makes us insecure. And then we do drugs, and we don't talk about it. You know, we just, we spin out of control. With openness, we have the control over what we do. And we can do anything, anything, anything. We can accomplish anything in this world. And that's what I'm going to do. It's good to be back. I don't laugh a lot in my videos. It's because I, I'm, I think it's a diversion from what's really important. And I think that's why my videos, why people enjoy watching them, is because I'm not joking around, and I'm not getting pissed off. Not much. I try not to. I got a little heated in this video. See you guys. All right, Gary. Thanks for your response. Get out of the textbooks, dude. Get into another person. Get into me. Get into yourself. This fucking emotion is going to blow your mind.